Today we're talking about why the INFJ breaks egos without even trying. So let me first say, it's not like the INFJ is really eager to do this. Not most INFJs that I've met, definitely not me. But it's something I see all the time. And I see it actually in INFJs who haven't really started taking on their transformational journey into their INFJ epic life or into a happy life. And these situations can be very harmful. They can be harmful not just for the person who's the recipient of this, but they can be hurtful for the INFJ. And it's something that we have to understand deeply. We have to understand first off why this is happening, how this is happening, what kind of power we actually have, and then decide for ourselves, is this really a path I want to go? Or am I willing to say just because I can, I don't need to do this because this is not going into the direction that is really beneficial for me or for others. We're going to get into this in detail. Before we get started, remember if you haven't done this so far to download the poster on the five pillars to an INFJ epic life. And if you say, I'm ready to take on my INFJ epic life journey, then get the INFJ epic life audio guide. All the information you find in the links in the description. So sometimes you hear that INFJs can really break people's hearts, but it's actually the ego that is really bruised. And you see this very often. It happens because the INFJ is so good at taking on the observer role. It's something that we can do on autopilot. And it's something that we do because we actually have good intentions. So you meet somebody and this can be a potential friend, a potential romantic partner. It can be a potential, you know, work colleague. It doesn't matter. Just somebody that enters your life. And at first glance, we want to create intimacy and intimacy in such a way that is, you know, comfortable for us. We want to have this intensity. We want to have deep conversations. We all know that INFJ isn't about, you know, small talk and things that aren't really giving us any intense feelings. But the problem with this is that we feel we're being vulnerable when in the end we're not. We tend to hollow ourselves out and allow ourselves to absorb other people, right? In a lot of ways, it does make us vulnerable. I understand, yes, because you are allowing yourself to be in another person's world. You allow your preferences to be altered based on the other person. That's why the INFJ can really turn into somebody who loves the music of your new friend, for example, because you start diving into their world. You really want to experience it, but it's not something that we do necessarily only out of like good intentions. We also do this because it gives our life excitement, right? It's really easy to get an emotional high, to get like a mental, you know, endorphin rush because we make this happen. Our mind is really programmed to feel a lot of intense emotions when we do this. So what does this mean though? In the end, you're understanding who the other person is. Does the other person at that moment actually know who you are? They don't. You will feel vulnerable because you're so connected to that person. You feel like you are so in tune with what they want that of course there's a vulnerability there. There's this danger that you will lose yourself when you're with the other person. I mean, it happens very rarely, but we've all been there where we've gone too far and later on found out, okay, I shouldn't have done this because I actually cared more about what they wanted and to such an extent that I really lost myself and it was really soul crushing for me. And you know, in the end we get really passively aggressive. That's when door slams happen and all of that stuff. But let's get back to the main point. We're talking about why the INFJ breaks egos, because let's look at it from this way. Although there's a connection there, although there's a vulnerability, you know who that person is. That person doesn't know who you are. And that's not just because they are not INFJs who can read you, but it's also because you're not showing them anything at all. You're not showing them things that you like that they don't like. You're not showing that to them. All you're showing them is that you are actually like them, that you can fit into their world because you don't want to make them uncomfortable. When you do this, the other person by default will start showing you their sides more and more, their weaknesses, their fears, everything that is going on in their mind, because they have no idea who you actually are 
behind that facade. Again, INFJs are not doing this on purpose, but if you ask people who've gone through this experience, they will tell you, I actually didn't know that this is who you were. I mean, they wouldn't tell you because once the ego is crushed, you know, people actually back off. And you'll see this, like I've experienced this firsthand and I've talked to, you know, so many INFJs throughout the years. This is something we experience so often, which is, you know, you have a connection with a person and then you say one thing that is coming from a perspective of, oh, I'm protecting myself or I'm putting myself first or something of that sort. And the other person is like completely, you know, taken back. That person is completely angry, you know, doesn't want to have anything to do with you, um, is completely mad and like hurt. Like I've experienced this more times than I can count. And you know, thankfully this doesn't happen to me anymore because I know what has caused this. And the reason for this is that I have played a role and INFJs do play a role. And we don't want to admit that to ourselves because we go into this with the best intentions. We go into this thinking, I want to make it easy for the other person. I want to make them feel excited about life. I want to be the mirror that shows them just how beautiful they are, right? Those are the thoughts that we go into the situation with, but we also have to understand that we're doing this to protect ourselves. We're observers. We're not showing them the sides of us that we know they're not going to like. Why? Because they would then abandon us, or at least that's a psychological deeper fear, or they would judge us. They would say, Oh, who are you? Why are you thinking this way? You know, all of these kind of things, so many things about who we are, we keep hidden. And it can be things that are esoteric. It can be things that other people might consider weird, but it can also be strength. So often people underestimate just what kind of mental strength the INFJ has. Why do they underestimate it? Not because they're blind, but because we're not showing them anything. Like even the most observant INFJ will not be able to understand you if you're not showing anything. And we are actually masters of this not showing who we are thing. And then you get into this dilemma that you know that other person's personal like backstories, you know that person's weaknesses, you know the things that they are insecure about. They don't know anything about you. And at some point you will get to a place where you will have so much resentment because you feel like, oh, I'm sacrificing everything for this relationship, for this friendship, for, you know, this romantic relationship, even if it's just like, as I said, a coworker, but you're putting so much into this and you have such great intentions. And then you recognize that the person has no idea that you're doing this for them, that they felt like, yeah, you are actually there benefiting from them because you're always in their world. They're always showing you the new kind of music, uh, the new place, their world, and so on. They're not looking at it from a perspective of, Oh, what a nice person who now takes the time to dive into my world. So I feel seen. How could they, you never shown them that perspective. All they see is you liking everything that they do and you being in their world. They have no idea what your world is without them. And if you're unsure, if you're that kind of person, if you've been in this situation or if you are in that situation, think of it this way. Think of two friends that are from different, you know, situations that have nothing in common that you are friends with. How easy would it be for you to combine this friendship group to say, Oh, friend a and friend B let's meet all three of us. I remember vividly how much I despised these situations because I was a completely different person when I was with person a, then I was with person B. So if I would combine them, then I will be automatically forced to show parts of myself or they will just be shown through that communication that shows them, Oh, I'm not just like person a, I'm also like person B. And those are things so many INFJs avoid because judgment comes up, you know, people could have opinions about you and you're not really facing that if you're just being how that one person wants you to be. And this is also something you read very often when you read like explanations of INFJs, it just says 
The INFJ likes to have one-on-one -on -one conversations. They like to have deep connections with certain people. Yeah. Okay. We get that. It's how we are. We're introverts. We'd rather have that than have like a big social group. But what is not written in those explanations are exactly those things that it doesn't come only from a perspective of, oh, it just energizes me more to be with one person but that it's also because we show different sides of ourselves to these people. And it's not like you have to get rid of this altogether, not at all, but to understand that there are tendencies there and that this can cause you a lot of problems because at some point resentment will come up. And once resentment comes up, your passive aggressive behavior will definitely crush some egos. And this is very powerful stuff. Like I admit it, I, have been afraid of using this for the longest time, which caused me a lot of dilemma, internal dilemma. And I see INFJs going through this, right? Because it's not a comfortable or nice situation to be in that you have to say, okay, I, you know, I have no other choice. I have to fight back. I have to protect myself, you know, or I'm just mad and I cannot control myself. And I say this one thing that's going to sting like nothing else because I know that person so well. They didn't know that I was going to judge them for this, but I know that they judge themselves for this. And then I will use it to my advantage. Once I'm mad, once I feel backed into the corner. So what is the solution here? Well, I've done this a couple of times and it broke my heart and not in a way of, oh, I'm so sad I had to hurt the other person. It was soul crushing because I didn't want to be that person. It made me into a person that I didn't like looking at. And I still felt like I had no other choice. So I understood I had to change something. And from that moment on, I decided I have to have a base, a base that is me, that I will not change or shift for anybody. And even if I don't have to share this part of me with everybody around me, like it's not like I talk about my channel or my INFJ thoughts or, you know, all of those things with my friends from school, but they know that this part exists. Then there are, you know, friends of mine who know that I like a certain kind of music, although I know they have a judgment towards it. It's not that we have to listen to the same kind of music when we're together, but they have to know that this is something I'd like because I'm not going to hide it anymore. And I also am going to be okay for them knowing that I have friends that they don't necessarily like, but I like them because I can overlook some things that others are really judgmental about. Like even if it's something as, you know, that person is really selfish or that person isn't really taking into consideration other people's feelings. Yeah, that's a person's weakness. And I like them for their strengths. I like them for what they bring to my life and I'm okay with you knowing I'm friends with that person, because if that is a reason for you to not be friends with me, then that's it. And that is true vulnerability because that's not a vulnerability from a place of, oh, I'm hollowing myself out and I'm so, you know, codependent to you. It's a vulnerability of I'm here standing and telling you things about myself that I know you might judge. And I'm vulnerable to that judgment on some extent. I do care about it on some level. Otherwise, I wouldn't have hidden it from you. But when you start living your life like this, you're never going to dive as deep into other people's lives as you used to. Because our capacity to do that is limited. And if you start filling your life with who you are and you make it known that this is something that is not up for the bait, it's something that you're going to authentically live out with whomever you meet, you are filling that void around yourself that before you could fill, you know, at some point from one person at another point from another person. Now you can't because this space around you, you have filled this up. So there isn't that much left. You can't dive as deeply into other people's lives anymore. I don't know so much about my best friend as I used to know when I was 20. I knew everything. I knew exactly what would make her mad. I knew exactly what would make her sad, what makes her happy, the kind of music she liked, the kind of art she liked. And I actually felt it. It wasn't just a rational thing. I really put myself into her world. Can't do that now. So that's a price I have to pay but I know that's a price that I'm willingly paying 
because first off, I don't ever want to be in a situation again where I'm so resentful of having given up who I am. And second of all, because I really like who I am and who I'm becoming. And that's the only way to create a life that's continuously growing and a life where you're not going to get to a place where you are crushing other people because you've been so hyper-focused on their life that you know exactly where to hurt them. I couldn't do that now. Not because I'm a better person now, but just because I don't know people that well. But therefore, I know myself much better. And it's about time that we as INFJs prioritize understanding ourselves more, choosing ourselves more than we do other people. You got this. Remember, if you want some more guidelines, how to tap into that space where you start creating for yourself and understanding yourself and grow from that place, then get the free poster on the five pillars to an INFJ epic life. And if you want to take it to the next step and you say, now I'm going to take charge of my life, it's that time. Then get the INFJ epic life audio guide. All the information you find in the links in the description. And if you want to watch another video now that is in line with today's topic, then watch the video, how the INFJ can use their dark side to their advantage.